Hard work will always beat talent if talent slips. As simple as that. Now, if you can have the two, talent and hard work, then it's unstoppable. A lot of the kids nowadays, they forget the hard work. They just expect to get the big new boots, big car, without the hard work. You've got to work hard. If you don't work hard, you don't get nothing. Go home. Hard work, all day. It's about that time for Q&A 25. 25? 25. I was waiting. I was hoping you didn't know the episode number. This is Q&A episode 25. In case you didn't know, this is the show. Once a month, where we answer your questions. And we're gonna start with... Vodka! Let me take the first one. Yes, because I'm still looking for my Yeah, question. yeah, yeah. From you and Anon. Hey, my question is, how will you know when to shoot, pass or dribble? And I thought about it and I was like, initially I thought, you know, that's a weird question. You'll know when you'll know. But it's actually, you know, if you don't know... Now you know. And if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> Well, obviously, you know, if you're at your own half, don't shoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is something like nobody can ever teach you. Yeah, exactly. You know? we, you, you're gonna know in the situation what, and that's what it will come with experience. You simply gotta, you know, do one of the things and then you're gonna learn by trial and error. Uh, it, did, did it work? Hey, did it, was it a good situation to shoot in? If it wasn't a good situation to shoot in, there will probably be people telling you that. Have you ever thought about coaching a football team? No. No, not my thing. This is like, you know, when you had a great teacher that you uh, remember the rest of yes. your life. We all probably had a coach that really affected us. Inspired, yeah, yeah, all that stuff. And it would be great to be that person to somebody else, but mm -hmm. like coaching, no, not my thing. I would probably more go into punditry or something like that, if that was the case. With your opinions? Oh, yes, because I only have yeah, good God. opinions. And if people disagree with me, they're wrong. That's what I always say. Now, uh, that, was, that was great punditry, by the way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just all agree that uh, the best football punditry couple on TV uh -huh. is Gary Neville and, and Jamie, Jamie Carragher? Yes. Yo. You gotta love these guys. Okay, next question. For a long time, Neymar was the obvious successor to be claimed as the best player in the world after Messi and the gold, probably Ronaldo. Do you think that he might still be considered like that or have other players overshadowed him? The thing about Neymar is that obviously everybody can see the talent he mm -hmm. has. But the problem has been all these other things that people hate him mm -hmm. for. That's definitely gonna have an effect on many people's opinion. I'm not gonna lie. Even myself a little bit, like it has taken down the know, romanticism is kind of yeah, gone i mean know? like it's cool to be confident like cr7 uh -huh. and it's cool to be quiet and shy like messi yeah but neymar is just being a bit of a that's how it is and i will never argue the talent side of things i think right now that to be claimed as the best player in the world you need the public acceptance you yeah. need people to like you yeah. and i feel that neymar has kind of tipped over from being super likable and i like him I met him in person and, and he's a really nice guy. Oh, I can promise you he's probably a super nice guy. And again, ability-wise, after Messi and Ronaldo, after their reign is over, like, I will say that Neymar will be the most talented. Yes. Now, we, we move, move on, on to, to real talk. And I'll take the first one. Which, uh, who is the best footballer on YouTube? Obviously, they have two freestylers. Everyone will uh, mention them. They are very, very good footballers. Will John, of course, playing professionally in um, Lokomotiv Tbilisi, I think, right now. Matt Sheldon, also very good, also a pro player. And my boy, Michael Cunningham. Yeah, I said it. This kid is outrageous. Do you think sponsors ruin football shirt designs? Yes. I 100% think so. Look at this. Beautiful shirt, very, very nice, but the Chevrolet sponsor ruins everything. Why does it have to be? But this is, I mean, I respect this because they only have one. Like, you know, yeah, when you're sure. watching like, you know, the Finnish league, right? The Tiffany <laughs> guy in Norway. Are, like there's two here, three yeah, here, yeah, one in the back and like whatever. Yeah. I definitely think the answer is yes. Next question. What are your opinions on hard work versus talent when it comes to becoming a pro? Okay, so this is a big question. On the long term. Hard work will always be talent. Again, I repeat, talent with hard work, unstoppable. If you don't work hard, you don't get nothing. Go home. We can take that back to the discussion about Cristiano Ronaldo and Le Lionel Messi. Messi is obviously the, the exponent for, for talent. Ronaldo also a talented guy, but really made his mark because of hard work. I think that you need a certain amount of talent to make it for the big time, you know? 
the, the high echelons of football. I totally but agree. you will never ever get there without hard work. And no, let no one tell you that Lionel Messi hasn't worked hard oh. because he has. Oh yeah, I totally agree. And like you said, I definitely think that when we're talking these elite level mm -hmm. athletes, mm -hmm. all of them, I will argue, had a certain talents when they first started like you know it's like some people are just naturally gifted in all kinds of they can play somewhat tennis basketball yeah. football like all kinds of sports mm -hmm. they just have the vibe for it everybody on that level had some kind of a talent mm -hmm. but if you don't work hard in general in life you know would i rather have someone who's slightly less talented but works really hard or the most talented footballer genetics wise brain wise ever in history who has a really lazy work ethic. No, no, no. I know I would take the slightly less talented but really hard working player. No. For me, that's it. That's, that's the end of the discussion. Why did Messi shave his beard? Wow, I guess. The wifey at home was like, bro, it's time to <laughs> It's time now. It's, <laughs> it's time. time, like, you know, you had your fun. Now, <laughs> let's get back to reality. <laughs> but officially, we don't know. We don't, we have no idea. I guess there's only one person in the world who knows. Yeah, his and wife. And that is Messi's wife. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we, and know, then, we move on to Bootbag. Okay. Piyush Dubi, why Modric is cutting his football boots? We probably, yeah, we've probably uh, all seen the pictures. Let me go get it. Catch. My good man, Luka Modric, is taking his boots and then he's cutting this part off uh, the, the top of the tongue. So he's basically got a, a big slash down here. It's probably two things. Uh, obviously, you know from having a, a, a pretty big foot that- It's gonna be difficult to get in. Exactly. Simply because this-, this and maybe this part pressures his ankle or like the, this part of your foot a little Dude, bit. Dude, allow me to- Okay. But I was guessing, <laughs> well, were those the points? Those were the points. Basically, yes. probably because, you know, it's difficult to get in because this is basically just a, a, a tight piece that's going to be, it, you can't move it. Yo, in general, I just want to make a disclaimer that nowadays, because of all these suck things uh -huh. and whatever, I have a, such a difficult time getting into any it's football It's ridiculous. Wood. Every yeah. time I go to the pitch, I have to have a... A shoehorn. Shoehorn with me. Uh-huh. And, and probably... End uh, of disclaimer. Luka Modric hates shoehorns. Yeah. So he just cuts his boots instead. And it could also be uh, that, that, you know, that some parts of his foot uh, are, are so big, he, he, he might have a really high arch or whatever you call it, and the boots are simply too uncomfortable. They put too much pressure. So he wants this bit to be more flexible. What was the first non-public boot that you held in your hands? There's two ways to look at it, like non-public, like something that never came out or uh, unreleased. Okay, for never released, I would probably say either the... That would be the Pog Booms. That was made for his return never to Manchester. Never released. That was never released. We also, do you remember the... The high... Oh, the footy sock. Okay, yeah, the footy sock it was, was never first... released, but it was out. Yeah. It was imagery out. Footy sock was, yeah, that was the first one. Good call. Yeah. Hi, Jay Mike. I'm in the market to buy some new grip socks, but I have a limited budget. So what is the best value for money grip sock? Uh, that would be the Falca socks. They're the most expensive, but they're also so far ahead of every other sock that you get the highest value. But if you want a good pair of grip socks, Go buy either the, 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 the Adidas Alpha Skin or the Nike Grip Socks. Both are really good. So my boy Darby Yank, fellow boot nerd here, shout out for that. Nerd. On one hand, some limited boots are awesome. Uh, on the other hand, some market is oversaturated in this point. Do you think limited boots will start bombing? And I'm thinking back to last year's EA Sports Hyper Venom as an example that didn't really sell out. So the big question is, are limited boots, you know, getting oversaturated? Are there too many limited boots out there? Are the brands killing the limited boot game? I think yes, uh, because like, back in the days, you could count in one hand how many limited uh -huh. pairs were dropping. Uh -huh. It seems like every release is more or less marketed or sold as a limited Listen, release. Every but then, month we get a limited or disruptive some sort of release. Yeah. And I get why they do it because it creates extra hype. It, it disrupts the market. Well, it does it, you know, it, does it even anymore? Yeah, but, but I don't think question, it does. You know? And you know, they yeah, look at the Ronaldinho boots. Yeah. They sold out, but they only made a thousand pairs. Like that's not a lot. And, and the hype wasn't too big. I remember back in the days when they made the CR7 boots, you know, the white goals, 100 pairs were. Well, Crazy. I mean, yeah. I have never been so happy in my life yeah. as I was 
when I got us two pairs of those boots. I mean, that was insane. And limited boots are just not the same anymore. And no brand is gonna go out there and say, look, we're gonna stop making limited edition boots yeah. and we're gonna stop releasing that many because because obviously they sell out faster than the other. But Yon. it's also your fault. If you keep buying only the limited releases, yo, then, yo, like, stop. But you know what I mean? I know like, exactly what you mean. If the market is embracing the yeah. limited editions. But, but like, we, like we saw with the hypervenoms that, that kind of tanked, I don't know why, but people had just had enough. Mm? But it's a signal to the brands that we don't want to buy that many limited edition boots. Also because they're usually more expensive. Yeah. So I think they should cut down on the limited uh, edition boots and then just move on with their lives. And now we move on to the giveaway. And what do you have for this? You're gonna you get to win a pair of vapors. A vapors. Both vapors. What's the question though? What is the most important thing for a midfielder, especially central midfielder? And the things which are absolutely required for that position. So basically, uh, what do you need? What kind of attributes uh, you need to be a good midfielder? Now, now it's a yeah. great question. It's a great question. And we could probably talk about it for like 10 minutes. Uh, maybe uh, we're gonna make a video on it one day. I wish we had briefly. a format where we talk about stuff for 10 minutes. Briefly, what do you need to be a good uh, midfielder? You need to be a great ball handler. Mm -hmm. You need to be super comfortable with the ball at your feet. Mm -hmm. You need to have a great passing range, like mm -hmm. uh, you can pass the ball in many different ways. Mm -hmm. You need to be great at you know reading the game and seeing things uh, as they come. And you need to be calm. And oh yeah, of course, easy. calm, and collected, no, you know. knows, no stressing. Because even if you're good with the ball, but you you know you stress easily, you're gonna screw things up. You need to be the motor of the team. Yes. You know? uh, like you need to know where everybody is before they are there. And now we move on to the question, question of the month. And I have that one. If you take the metal studs out of an SG Pro boot, would you be able to wear them on AG? And it's actually a pretty good question. Now, let me get a pair of SG Pro. It's a very simple question. Look at the AG. Obviously, you shouldn't do it. Like, this is my first answer. <laughs> don't do it. Don't like, ever, don't, ever, don't, ever screw don't out do your... it. <laughs> like, if you look at this sole, look at how many of the studs are SG studs here. If, if you basically take all of the SG studs out, you're going to be left with six studs. Now, most old SG boots had only six studs, which means that you put a lot of pressure on each stud. And there would only be a stud here, there, 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 which means it would be hella unstable. Now, if you play on AG, what you wanna do is to have a lot of studs to really even out the pressure. You want them to be shorter, so, so you don't really dig that much down in the surface. And you also want them to be hollow because it doesn't generate as much heat and it doesn't really uh, uh, affect the durability that much. It's simply less abrasive. So if you take these out, you're gonna be running on that, 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 and that stud. That's not gonna be very good and you're gonna, your ankle is and simply it's probably gonna, gonna be horribly uncomfortable. It's gonna be horribly dangerous, uncomfortable, uh, dangerous for, you're gonna twist your ankle, all that jazz. So no. We had a great time. Hopefully you had a great time. Leave your comments down below. If you want to see more Q&As, you can watch the playtest right down here. The playtest, playlist. Man, we're Dude. losing. Look, yeah. yo, listen, I'm going to take this. Go buy some wicked football stuff over there. Go subscribe to the channel over this there. And cut, cut, cut. It's all.